So you might know me as the guy who beat Emerald Kaizo, the hardest Pokemon game ever made. But did you know that there are other Kaizo games too? I beat both Blue and Crystal Kaizo on my channel a long time ago. But those games were a lot different than Emerald Kaizo. The thing that made EK so special is that I beat it with hardcore Nuzlocke rules. However, when I was playing Blue and Crystal, I used healing items. And as you can imagine, it made those playthroughs maybe not so fun. After beating Emerald Kaizo, I wondered if I could have done the same in Crystal. The issue, however, was that Crystal Kaizo was balanced around the use of healing items, whereas Emerald doesn't even allow the use of items in battle. Not only that, but in Crystal, the levels of enemy trainers after the Elite Four actually go over level 100. This means that an actual hardcore Nuzlocke of Crystal Kaizo is, well, pretty much impossible. But my interest was piqued. So I gathered some of the most skilled ROM hack creators, as well as a lot of veteran Emerald Kaizo players, to update the ROM hack. Their job? making the experience of Nuzlocke and Crystal Kaizo as close to its Emerald counterpart as possible. And after eight months, they sent me uh, a totally legitimate crystal cartridge in the mail. This is Pokemon Crystal Kaizo Plus. It has completely updated movesets for all trainers, reworked encounters, and a refitted level curve, as well as a ton of quality of life features like infinite rare candies to skip all the miserable grinding, running shoes, a full restore key item, and a portable PC box to skip walking back and forth between Poké Centers. If you'd like to follow my full journey through this game, consider subscribing. I'm Pokémon Challenges, I'm probably the best Nuzlocker in the world, and these are my first attempts at trying to hardcore Nuzlocke, Pokémon Crystal Kaizo Plus. I'm playing this first attempt blind, so the starter selection can really go either way here. Chikorita was the best starter in the old Crystal Kaizo, but that was because healing items made defensive Pokémon incredibly overpowered. I will follow my instincts here and go with the fire type. Grass types are weak and common, water types are strong and common, fire types are strong and usually rare, so Cyndaquil it is. Even though I'm playing blind, my knowledge of XP management has increased significantly due to my experience with Emerald Kaizo. I use the infinite rare candy item to level Cyndaquil and blaze through the initial rival fight. After getting Pokeballs, it's time for some encounters. And these early game encounters are brought to you by NordVPN. The VPN service with 5200 servers in 59 different countries that allows you to switch seamlessly between your connections. My first encounter on Route 29 is a Caterpie, an incredibly good encounter in a run like this because it evolves so quickly, almost as quick as the faster connection you get with Nord Lynx. Next I head to Route 46 and catch a female Nidoran. Pretty interesting encounter depending on the region you're in. Sometimes it evolves really early because the Moonstone is available, but other regions have the Moonstone extremely late, kind of how TV shows can come out way later in certain regions than they do in others. Luckily, NordVPN allows you to change your location and catch that show on your favorite streaming service as soon as it comes out as well as shows that might otherwise not be available to you at all. Lediba, our Route 30 encounter, evolves early into Ledian and gets access to a lot of good moves, including Reflect and Light Screen, which will protect my team on its travels. Just like NordVPN protects your data on your travels when you're logging into public Wi-Fi networks, like at airports or cafes. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee if you don't like it. There's 24-7 customer support if anything goes wrong. You can get a huge discount on your first two-year plan using my code Pokemon Challenges, or going to the link in the description or the comments, nordvpn.com slash Pokemon Challenges. Thank you to Nord for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. The first trainer battles in classic Kaizo fashion are already quite scary. I managed to get through Youngster Joey with a clutch burn though. He's followed by this fucking guy who almost sweeps my entire party with a rollout centret. Luckily, I get a crit and a flinch and prevent the first attempt from dying right then and there. I pick a Bellsprout on Route 31 and a Geodude in Dark Cave. Surely this will be very useful on Faulkner, right? There's no way all of his Pokemon have coverage against rock types, right? Mareep and Ammonite, a Crystal Kaizo classic, also join my team. My Sprout Tower encounter ends up being Apom, who immediately proves its worth as my team member by almost dismembering my entire team. We make our way through Sprout Tower and get to enjoy all of its world famous sights, such as a Cubone holding a fucking thick club annihilating my Nidoran. An overly complicated overworld maze that forces me to start over if I take one wrong step. Sleep move spam. Early game Pokemon with perfect coverage like this Psyduck with Powder Snow. Bye Bellsprout. A curse spamming Eevee devouring my Omanyte. And so much more. Visit Sprout Tower today, guys. The first mini boss of Crystal Kaizo is Sage Lee, who boasts a terrifying Elekid with Ice Punch. A Sunflora and a Sudowoodo. Here's how that fight went. Is the Pokemon aren't changed, this, just the movesets are for this part of the game. Okay, that is not a Bellsprout. Very good. Sunflora. I see how it is. I fucking see how it fucking is, chat. Oh my god. How annoying. And I'm out of poison powders. Shit. 
I think Mach Punch is actually the most damage. And it's no, no damage at all. I think this makes more sense. Okay. Well then. Not looking great, boys. At least that kills. Okay. That's really fucking scary. I'm staying in for a turn fishing for the burn. Do I want to Thunder Wave it? I think I do actually, because then I outspeed with uh, Magnitude. Staying in, I'm not playing around crit. He's paralyzed anyway. Pursuit. Wow. So Giga Drain might actually kill here. Sending it. Easy. Faulkner's gym has been outfitted with these ice lanes in Crystal Kaiza, which I never understood, but anyway. A lucky crit on the second trainer's Farfetch lets me remain deathless here and opens up the way to the terrifying Faulkner. Will he live up to Roxanne's reputation in Emerald Kaizo? If he does, I'm definitely wiping here. I lead Geodude, and first up on Faulkner's team is Murkrow. Faulkner sends out Gligar next, who, as I learned later, is actually buffed to have Gliscor's base stats in this game? Expecting a ground move, I switch to Butterfree, but get hit with a Steel Wing instead, which ends up also giving Gligar a defense boost. I'm trying to get some amount of value out of Butterfree before it just dies off here, I press Psybeam, but it just dies off here. Knowing that I have to use a special attacker after that defense boost, I go to the only one I have left, Quilava. Luckily, this Gligar does not have a ground move, and instead hits me with a rock throw, which I can actually take. In an incredible turn of events, Quilava immediately gets a burn with the flame wheel and cuts Gligar's attack in half. Not only that, but the turn after, I even get a crit. And here I have a crucial idea that will end up swinging the tide in my favor. I had looked up Ledian's learn set in this game earlier and realized it actually gets Thunder Punch at level 17. By hardcore nuzlocke -like rules, you're level capped at the gym leader's strongest Pokemon, in this case 16, but leveling up during the fight is legal. I brought all of my Pokemon very close to leveling up because of that. I assume here that Thunder Punch is going to be essential in winning this fight and make the following pivot play. Seeing that Gligar is two turns away from dying to burn damage, I switch to Geodude into the incoming rock throw. Geodude now baits Gligar into using Steel Wing, which I can switch Ledian into. Gligar dies of the burn damage, and Ledian gets Thunder Punch. I immediately get rewarded for this play because Faulkner goes into the 4 times electric weak Mantine. I can just use Thunder Punch and immediately get frozen by its Powder Snow. After that, Ledian also gets confused, and I switch to Fluffy, who can take out the Stingray, but not without getting toxic first. Fluffy levels up and learns Spark, and is now 1v1 against Faulkner's Knockdown. I choose the Thunder Wave as I don't think Spark will kill, and learn in biology class that sheeps are slower than owls. Luckily for me, because Fluffy is poisoned, Noctowl would not be using its best move Hypnosis here, and I instead trade a Spark for a Nightshade. I can then switch Apom to the Ghost-type Nightshade for free, and start attacking with Fury Swipes. Noctowl getting fully paralyzed and good Fury Swipes RNG prevents Hypnosis shenanigans from killing my win condition here, and I take down Noctowl. And then, Faulkner sends out his, arguably, most terrifying Pokémon, Togetic. This thing has no moves other than metronome and soft boiled, which means that sometimes this thing is just useless and I get an easy kill, but other times we'll do fun stuff such as using psychic on my Ekans, using barrier to make itself unkillable with soft boiled, or exploding on my Fluffy. Anyway, on this attempt, Togetic actually behaved quite well and with Lady Luck smiling on Apom just a little bit more, I actually get another kill here. Last up, Faulkner sends in his Pidgeotto. Apom heroically snaps out of confusion here, 4 hits the Pidgeotto, and somehow, someway, I get my first gym badge with only one death. And by somehow, someway, I mean I got obscenely lucky. Moving on to some more encounters, I headbutt a tree in Violet City for Spearow, hatch my Togepi egg in Cherry Grove, and catch a useless as fuck Vulpix on Route 32. Fisherman Henry's Quillfish gets Lady into a pretty spicy 1 HP versus 1 HP face off here, but luckily, Ledian's move pool is insane, and I can finish it with Mark Punch. I fish for Kabuto in Union Cave and get just a hint of PTSD from my old Crystal Kaizo runs, because this is where I used to grind my Pokemon by fishing and using the auto fire A function on my emulator for hours. This is why we use rare candies now. Union Cave goes smoothly until I encounter the last trainer, Pokemaniac Larry. His Lickitung begins rolling out and stacking insane amounts of damage, even against the resisting Geodude. I decide my best chance of survival is lowering the Lickitung's accuracy with Mud Slap and praying that it misses its final rollout hit, which 
It doesn't. Rip Fluffy. His fur then destroys my Kabuto's HP bar and speed stat with a paralyzing thunder punch, and I'm forced to switch into Quilava. But because it's Kaizo, the fur it obviously has to have Surf as well. Lovely. I'm forced to risk getting crit and take out this demon, but I'm immediately faced with another one. Smeargle, who in classic VGC fashion just spams Spore on me, incapacitating my team. Sleep is so brutal in Gen 2, as it can last up to 6 turns. I have to play into another crit with Togetic, and this time, do get punished for it, netting me another death to Larry. Fucking Larry. He immediately lands another crit on my Ledian. Look at my team's HP bars here, please. This fight looks incredibly grim. I'm forced to do more damage to Smeargle by using Psychic with Ledian and sacrificing it. Kabuto somehow tanks a submission from Smeargle and gives me a very costly Union Cave exit. After picking up a Meryl, a Poliwag, a Beedrill, and a Slowpoke, I can clear out Team Rocket, and because of Crystal Kaiser's clever map design, I'm immediately forced into a fight with my rival, who takes out my newly acquired bug type with his Croconaw. After facing some gym trainers that have classic bug types such as Arbok, Golbat, and Delibird, I get a face off against Bugsy. I lead with Poliwhirl because by now I've learned how broken sleep is in Gen 2. Might as well abuse it myself, right? I put Bugsy's Leap Butterfree to sleep and start pounding down on the bug with Poliwhirl's body, crushing it in the process. Bugsy eventually switches out before Butterfree is dead here. Did I mention the dev team somehow rewrote the entire Gen 2 battle AI from scratch for this game? It's designed to be much smarter and switch in situations like this. Ariados is very buffed in this game and an actual threat, but I hypnotize it here and switch to Firo to start potentially sweeping Bugsy's team. Firo takes down the spider without waking it up, and Bugsy sends out his most threatening Pokemon, Dunsparce. No, I'm, I'm not kidding. This uh, thing had all of its base stats buffed for this ROM hack and is about to go crazy on my team. I switch into Graveler, who gets paralyzed by Glare, and this is where the true evil of this Dunspar set really shows. It has Glare, and then three moves that can flinch in Headbutt, Rock Slide, and Bite. Because Bite is special in Gen 2, it does sizable damage to my Graveler here. I'm in real trouble. I pull out Graveler early to save it as a potential pivot, and try to bring Dunsparce down with some sleep strats. Unfortunately, Poliwhirl's streak of hitting Hypnosis ends here, and Dunsparce paralyzes it. I use Graveler as a pivot to bait Dunsparce into biting on my switch to Apom. The Purple Monkey's RNG saved my Faulkner fight, surely he can do it again here, right? It gets a massive 4 hit Fury swipes and can finish Dunsparce off with Swift, not before getting glared and taking significant damage. Dunsparce has essentially invalidated half of my team. The onslaught of threats does not end here, as Bugsy sends out his Pinsir. Anticipating a fighting move, I have to switch. The only real answer I see here is Quilava, but since this is Kaizo, I'm pretty damn sure that this will have a rock move as well. In order to minimize damage taken by what is maybe the only real answer I have left, I choose to sacrifice Poliwhirl. This decision ends up being completely inconsequential though, as Pinsir just immediately crits my Quilava with the rock slide I was expecting it to have. However, I have one more idea. I saw Pinsir go for Vital Throw when I sacrificed Poliwhirl. Vital Throw is a powerful fighting move, but it always goes last. I see the one out I have at winning this fight. I bring in Kabuto, which will bait Pinsir into going for the Vital Throw. I'll go first and have a chance to win with either Rock Slide Flinch or Crit. And it turns out my luck has not run out just yet. Bugsy brings his Butterfree back out, and I switch to Firo to play around the Wake Up Giga Drain, which is precisely what happens. You can really tell that I've been through a lot of shit with these Kaizo games, huh? Firo can then take a kill on Butterfree, and I'm faced with a Pokemon that is somehow more annoying than Bugsy's Dunsparce, his Shuckle. I actually remember this from the original Crystal Kaizo. A buffed HP stat, Leftovers, Sandstorm, Wrap, Toxic, and Protect, combined with the highest defense stat in the game. What a nightmare. But I do have something left for this. Notice how out of all these four moves, only Rap can deal damage to my paralyzed Graveler. Despite being low HP, it actually has quite a bit of juice left. I choose to increase my win percent by mud slapping it until Graveler faints with the Rap damage and I go back to this fight's hero, the Kabuto. It gets itself poisoned in the process, but the massive damage from Rock Slide does eventually bring down this Pokemon equivalent of a fly that keeps landing on your face as you're trying to fall asleep. A unique quirk in Gen 2 battle mechanics actually saves me a good chunk of HP here because you don't take poison damage when you kill things in these games. Bugsy now brings out his ace, Scyther. I dodge one last crit and by the skin of my teeth bring down Bugsy and earn a second gym badge. But, my friends, this is a Kaizo game. When you're hardcore nuzlocking blind, even the best of luck will only get you so far. The difficulty curve will increase more and more and more until even good RNG will not be able to save you and thus follow the battle of Route 34. After catching my encounter Slugma, I run into these ladies. Here, the game makes you fight three trainers back to back without the ability to heal in between. For playing blind, and with this many deaths, 
these nine Pokemon are just far too powerful to take on. Oh, I also might have forgotten to heal my Azumarill before this fight. Just this Staryu alone with Waterfall and Thunderbolt can hit every single one of my Mons super effectively and my team just gets completely demolished. That is the essential Kaizo experience. But obviously, this run was only the beginning. I'm currently doing a marathon stream over on Twitch trying to beat this challenge, so if you'd like to tune into my future attempts, head on over. Also, if you're more of a YouTube watcher, ew, subscribe to my second channel, PHL Daily, where the highlights of each attempt will be uploaded as well. You can also watch the unedited version of this run on the VOD channel. I suck at YouTube outros. Have a wonderful night.